All right, so second leg of the day, playing some uh, <laughs> Jund with Shadows. Not Jund Shadow, don't confuse the two. Completely separate decks. Um, although they are going to have, like, probably a good 55 card overlap. But the idea here is we kind of just want to play, like, a Jund mid-range game of Ren and Six, Liliana, Spyro... Ragavan, whatever else. But just have like this shadow clock thrown in here. So maybe we can be a little bit more aggressive, uh, pushing damage through, getting on the board. We adjusted the mana base a bit, took out like Takanuma, Black Cleave Cliffs, things like that for some additional shock lands. Uh, we've got Nurturing Peatland in here, Besaju to help loop with like Ren and Six. We're going a lot bigger than other shadow decks with the three Liliana the Veil, plus three Seasoned Pyromancer, plus K Command, two Riveteers Charm, and a Fury. So we'll see how that plays out. We're definitely relying a lot more on Renin Six than we have previously. In the sideboard, we get a lot of these free spells like Force of Vigor and Endurance to help uh, neutralize graveyard decks, uh, artifact based decks. We get Veil of Summer and additional Besaju to get with Ren. Ancient Grudges, uh, we get an Alpine Moon, Anger of Gods for the good wide decks, Collector Brutality. So really the things we're trying to dodge here are like the four color pile decks where hopefully like Rin, Liliana will be able to help carry us a bit there. But let's jump in. <laughs> no time like the present to uh, fire off some jun Jund colored spells. All right, what do we got for round number one? Something cool. Since we don't have like counter spells in this list, we definitely have to be more proactive. But out of this particular list, some of the stuff we cut for the shadows was like an additional land, um, a cling to dust, Second Inquisition. So, like, they weren't overly impactful spells. And I love how I say we need to dodge four color, and it's like the first matchup we run into. So, let's see what happens. I uh, think I'm just going to lead with Thoughtseize here. I don't want to lead with Ragavan and have them just get like, um, what's it called? Ren and Six, Ping. So we're we just taking Counterspell. If I take like abundant growth and they counterspell something, that gives them delirium for traverse. So I think I'm just taking counterspell next turn, like dash Ragavan, play a 1 1 shadow. Just try to like get some pressure under um, traverse. There's a Wren off the top. That's like fairly close to worst case scenario there. I'm just like immediately finding a Wren.
Matic ending doesn't do anything for me. Guess that's one way to get delirium online. Soon to go get an Omnath here. Okay. So let's dash Ragavan again. Hope our opponent did not draw an unholy heat is like their one or two unknowns. Attack you. Play shadow, say go. And we're going to have to try to kill this Omnath with the draw trigger on the stack. So we still know they have a Misty in hand. really matter if I do this now or wait until my turn. Do I need to Spyro here? No. So I can do that. Get back one of my fetches. Fetch and shock. Dash Ragavan again. Uh, does it matter if I take out their Ren? I think I'd rather just deal eight to them. Yeah. So now like one miss fetch and all of a sudden like K command Ren ping or something could be lethal. Rogren Triumph's okay. Yeah, so now, like, if they did find, like, a, um, a Solitude to take out Shadow, then Ragavan Dash plus Ren Ping K Command, which I've got the mana for, is lethal. So. We'll take that one. Um... Seiju and Ren could be an option. It's not great, but... Void Mirror is good against the Pitch Elementals, but really bad if they just get to, like, the point where they need to hard cast them. Endurance against their Traverse build seems okay. Veil of Summer against Counter Spells. Lightning Bolt's a little meh. 
I just like board out all those since I have terminates. I think K commands a little meh. Got a Ren, got a Shadow, Riveteer's Charm. I think I gotta mull this. It's just like too slow. This is Ren turn two, but not Shadow until turn three. And it's only a one one with no disruption of any kind. Uh. Don't think I can afford to throw back another Yuri. Might end up besaging a land next turn. Artifact enchantment, non basic. I guess if they cast it to fairy, that's probably okay, right? They cast it to fairy, I cast the lily. But I'm not going to besage you here because they don't currently have counter spell up. Uh, let's take up on the sage you. Or we're we taking up on the other lily. Oh, I'm beside you. Matic ending my lily. Why on four Ren and six? Because I want to try it out. I'm again, this is uh like the stream title says, this is Jund with Shadows. This is not Jund Shadow. This is not a typical Death Shadow deck that happens to be in Jun Colors. This is literally Jun mid range. Take out four cards, add four Death Shadow. And Jun mid range is like always running four red and six. So that's where we're at.
I'll go ahead and get the Seiju in the hand. That's the case, just go all the way and play for Urza Saga. Well, Urza Saga does not pair very well with Shadow in your three color mana base. Like, we can kind of make it work okay in two color, but that's mostly because we're just like aggressively fetching and shocking very easily uh, for two colors when we don't have Saga. But it's a lot more awkward than this. Alright, so let's get you. And I believe I'm going to fetch and shock Lily. Tick up, ditch the Beseju, and terminate the Omnath. Mainly because I want to get like both of my planeswalkers ticking up. I don't want to tick down the Lily and then just like lose her to a um, uh, what's it called? Like a unholy heat, like they showed me already. Give them a chance to block with the Omnath. Don't. So let's kill it off. There you go. So Ren's fine. We fetch and shocked down to uh to five to get Shadow out of range of unholy heat. So that was deliberate. Let's go ping you. Play you. Keep the new one because they're both going to end up at the same loyalty anyway. Pick up Lily. I guess I could have like played this out, played the shadow and sacked the Wren. Maybe that was better. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that was uh, that was poor, poor card management. I should have just played the fetch, played out the shadow, Riveteer's charm to like sack the Wren, then ticked up Lily.
But I think as long as I can, like, keep this Lily alive this turn, I should be not great, but okay. I'm kind of banking on them having a removal spell for Tarmogoyf. And I just untap Ult Lily. Omnath is fine. I guess the Omnath, the third land hitting, hits all my planeswalkers for four. But I couldn't stop this anyway, right? Unless I had like Lily Edicted last turn and. So now this charm probably needs to become exile the top three. Scratch that. Not love my position here. Especially with them about to ultimate this uh, Ren. Have I tried the new Squee in a Jun Shadow list yet? No. Does that card do anything we're interested in? Like... I'll just go to... Uh, I guess we can Ren Ping, the Ice Fang. They're drawing two cards. Like, what does Squee do that screams this needs to be in Death Shadow? Usually when I look at cards like that, my first thought is, all right, this is a card that's to an extent meant to be good against like uh, sweeper effects and things like that. But if we wanted something that was good against sweepers, we could just play more planeswalkers. And we already don't do that most of the time, so... Been trying to squeeze one of in traditional Rakdos mid-range and it's been stronger than I thought it would be. Yeah, like, I'm sure it's good in a deck like that. But I guess my thought process is a lot of the decks that, like, would run Squee uh, are, like, Jund and Rakdos mid-range and stuff. Like, decks that are already um, pretty high on those effects... But, like, we're already not playing hardly any of them. So what makes us want to jump from, like, none of them to a 2-2 two -two with haste that we can pay four mana and exile four cards to get back? 
instead of just like another Kroxa. Like, is this card better to get back for four mana than Kroxa? And to me, I would say no. Like, Croaks are getting the cards out of hand, being a bigger body, the attack trigger is like better than Squee and a couple 1-1s. One but if somebody else has got a, uh, a differing opinion, Doesn't scream chatter to me. I didn't cut any croaks. So I just played a three croaks of one squeak. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm talking about is it seems fine if you're like already playing these effects and this is just like another one of that. But if you're not playing these effects, then I don't really know what this is like adding to the mix that you're really interested in having access to. Like, in that same three-mana realm, you've got cards like, um, uh, Season Pyromancer that can leave you tokens and get cards and... Alright, so that's two Solitudes gone. Hold up for a second with this endurance. Maybe there's a world if they play a fetch land and crack it for a Ren, I might want to uh, evoke endurance. This looks like it's just going to be a prismatic ending. Yep. Alright. There's like no way their mana base is cooperating that well right here, right? They do have the Ren in the fetch. Mm, I would really love to snag that fetch. And just like shut off the Ren that way. But I think that's going to be too. Uh, too situational. Because I don't want to like evoke the endurance and lose the Riveteer's charm just to hit that Ren fetch. If you're playing a Blood Moon effect, Cyborg or Main, or playing a basic force, it's easier to cast. It has haste. Something no the threats in Jun Shadow have, and it makes bodies, which is arguably better than Croaks against four colors. Sorcery speed removal is less effective, especially in protecting planeswalkers. There is very, very, very little chance you can convince me that that's better than Croaks against four color. Like, this isn't card advantage, card disadvantage. This is come in one time, hit them for three, and then they prismatic ending it and you never see it again. Like, I don't think uh, Planeswalker pressuring is high up on the reason of, or list of reasons to like select a card against four color. It 
it's like okay but i wouldn't look at a card and just say hey this pressures planeswalkers i need to be running it But we're not running any, like, Blood Moon effects. And even if we were, I'd probably still rather have Spyro and the extra bodies and the card draw than Squee with, like, the one body. Pointing out reasons for trying the card out. I'm not saying it's next stable. Yeah, and that's fair. Like, I'm not opposed to potentially trying it out. I just want, like, an argument why I should be trying it out. All right, let's see if they endurance in response to this. Yep. So now, do I want to Riveteer's Charm and dash Ragavan? Charm, Ragavan does not give me enough mana for anything else. So I think I'm going to say no. I think we're just going to pass, hold up Endurance plus uh, Charm. Maybe I can get lucky in like endurance in response to a traverse. Squeed plays a little better through hate than Croaks and affects the board state. Nowhere near as good as a finisher, but it's more reliable than Croaks on making an in game impact. Played better than looked in a mid range shell, but that doesn't say much about Shadow. But like, our biggest issue with Shadow is closing the game out. So I feel like a threat that is just like a little resilient isn't worth it. And if the haste is that big of a thing, then you could always try out like, um, what is it? Tenacious Underdog. They exiled a an unholy heat. Are they not going to cast it? Why would you not cast the unholy heat? What do you have for three mana that would prevent you from casting the card on Holy Heat? Last card, another unholy heat. What do I lose to here? Heat, heat. 
Omnath, Fetchland. So we'll just present lethal. Leyline binding. Did not think of that one. So. How does that change up what I'm doing? I could Riveteer's charm myself. Riveteer's charm them to keep my shadow around or my uh, endurance around. Hmm. Here's the Omnath with the fetch land. Oh boy. Opponent playing Mangucci's version of footballs or just four color. Your guess is as good as mine. Sultai went uh, two and three. At least one of those was a uh, user error. Shuffle your yard back in. Like, wasn't bad, but we at least punted some number. They've got Yorion to blink a bunch. Little surprised that they didn't um, Ren ping my Ren. I guess if they're just going to ley line binding it, then it's probably fine. So yeah, now they get Yorion back, or not Yorion, but Omnath and Leyline Binding, and ah, uh, this deck is gross. Yep, it's one of those spots where like a turn or two from getting around the corner, and you just hit lands. Your opponent hits spells. But that's how it be sometimes.
Mid-range decks don't really like four color. You're not wrong there. Uh, Arrowhead, thank you so much for the follow. Also missed a follow by Palm 654 uh, a minute ago. So apologize for that. Hope both y'all are having an awesome Tuesday. Wherever you're at in the world, appreciate you coming around and hanging out. Really where we want to be, much better. Throw back the swamp, which we might just like match up dependent fetch up on turn one to thought sees anyway. Got a mirror match. Not a mirror match. Looks like Yogmoth. It is Yogmoth. Uh, so we'll take the Thran physician himself. At least this way, if they want to uh, Eldritch Evolution into a Yawgmoth, they got to give up Strangle Root or half a Strangle Root, and they don't get a ton of value off of it. Guess they might just, yeah, go get Grist. I do love that. Um, I do love that Yawgmoth players can like see black based Thoughtseize deck and just immediately go get Grist and know that it's going to be really, really good. It's like it doesn't really matter what all's going on. You just see a Thoughtseize and you're like, yeah, I can Grist here. I can Gris, and it's going to be a very solid choice for me. Especially if they keep ripping undying creatures on me. All right. So I can shock to four, Ren ping the insect, play the Tarmogoyf. I can play the Goyf, hold up push. I think that's what I want to do. Just get this in tapped. Chris is OP and made my shadow opponent resign and go home from our modern tiny night. I mean, it's a pretty solid card, but it's just like it's a reasonable card in every deck that's not Yawgmoth. Like in this deck specifically, Grist is like an S tier card. But in every other deck, it's it's OK. It's nothing crazy. I think I'm going to get this, uh, well, no, I need to ping. 
gonna say maybe I want to get the Liliana on board, but I'd rather just Ren start pinging stuff. So next turn, if they don't do anything, I can Ren ping the insect and then Liliana edict the wolf. I was playing Abzan mid range, so not the enemy you speak of. If you're playing Abzan and you're playing Grist alongside the card Lingering Souls, you still count as the enemy. <laughs> so I would argue that's pretty close to the same amount of egregious. <laughs> I was like, I am fully convinced that the only deck Lingering Souls is good against in 2022 is whatever I am playing at that moment. Oh man, they double flipped. Oh boy. So... Ren Ping a token. How dead are we to a Gristle? It's only the cards in their graveyard. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, we are in fact dead to a Gristle. So I need to Liliana Edict a token. Lightning bolt a token. And knock down Grist before it, you know, kills me. All right. No Moss Grist. No, no Moss Grist. Ah, just the... Yog straight off the top. Keep that one. Get rid of that one. Take up this one. Play that one. I yaw with that one. Pass. No Moss Grist. Tick up here. Tick up here. Not show them that we just top decked. Oh, they top decked another Yog Moth. I'm uh, glad you used the good art of Lily, unpopular opinion. Well, it wasn't my choice. It was Mana Trader's choice. Uh, I'm fine with either Lily. I prefer the older Lily, but not enough to, like, really care one way or the other. All right, so I can Lily Edict them... Uh, dash Ragavan, ping with Grist. Dash Ragavan. Alright. So, we've got Endurances to come in. Anger of the Gods, <laughs> Modern Staple. EE's e okay. I believe that's about all I'm bringing in. Boarding out. Lily's a little clunky. Ragavan's pretty bad, especially on the draw. Something like that. 
No Saga, how come? Because Saga in a three-color deck with Death Shadow seems a little rough. You can kind of make it work in the two-color decks, but three-color, I think, is going to be overkill. And we just wanted to play Shadows. Also, thank you for the follow. Hope you're having an awesome Tuesday. Did not see the shadows. Yeah, shadows like the only consistent part of this channel is we're going to try to run death shadows and something, whether it's good or not. Let's get a stomping ground and as is tradition, bolt the bird. I'm saga van these days. I... <laughs> I'm really iffy on that deck. Like, I think it's cool, but I feel more often than not, it just like stumbles to itself and isn't doing anything like particularly powerful. But I also have not played much of it at all. I can only really speak from like the matches I've played against it. Do I care enough to ping and push this young wolf, or would I rather just like. You'd rather just take up and get like Shadow and Goif down? Is there any Shadow deck with sagas? Uh, it depends. If you ask if we have played Shadow decks with Sagas, then the answer is yes. We have like not only played Shadow decks with Saga, but we have uh, had very positive results with it. Like this deck's uh, sitting at eight and two right now uh, with Shadow Spear, with Saga, with Shadow. Or we've got like a Rakdos version somewhere that's done well. Um, so we have played Shadow and Saga, and you just have to, like, be careful to not put yourself in a position where it's going to cause a big issue. But in reality, it's not that difficult to play around. I think my opponent has the card Veil of Summer. <sighs> Maybe. Alright, so let's get rid of you. Uh, getting trampled to death shadow with shadow spear is a power move. So it's less for like the purpose of giving lifelink and trample to shadow as it is being able to give yourself like uh, a way to grind back against decks like zoo and the tribal decks and stuff because you can just strap up like a construct or a tarmogoyf. Um, and then there's going to be some number of games where you get to like, just get free wins against burn. So it's really not as bad as, uh, I think people want it to be. <laughs>
So I think people want it to be like, oh, Shadow with Shadow Spear, that's bad. You're losing games, blah, 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 blah. And that's not really what it comes down to actually be a lot of the times. All right, so I want this to resolve. Then I want to fatal or terminate the endurance. Fatal push the wall. Now that opponent can't uh, veil of summer me. That's like the only reason that we weren't aggressively throwing removal spells at them is they were holding. They had green mana available and could have cast Veil of Summer. But now that they could not, there's not a reason to hold up all the, the removal. Ever realized Jun was so good versus Yogg? I don't think it normally is. I think it's a, a little bit different because we're like playing shadows and stuff and like actually putting pressure on. Trample on shadow is great. Doesn't matter if it dies, if opponent does too. Yes, I agree. And it's kind of funny because we also played, uh, I don't have the list on this account, a domain shadow list with uh, Scion of Draco, which Scion gives your black creatures lifelink. So you get the lifelink of shadow, which again, if you're just winning the game, doesn't matter. Bean, yeah, that that game too was pretty rough. Like, I had all these removal spells in hand and was just waiting for an opportunity uh, for you to tap off of a potential Veil of Summer. And then it was just like, here's the endurance. All right, I'm going to open the floodgates. And then obviously not seeing the second land for multiple turns with the, uh, the double mana dork start into the Renin Six is pretty tough. But also, thank you for the follow and GG's for sure. Uh, yep. We'll rock with this. Lead on Pete Land Inquisition to try to ping ourselves a couple extra times to get Shadow online. But game one, you had all those grists, and that was. <laughs> That was rough to fight through. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Let's take Rift Bolt. Terra Sunder is worth a spot. I think it's a really good card. I've been thinking about trying out Terra Sunder. I don't know if I'd rather have it than just like Assassin's Trophy, but they're both options. Wasn't sure if EE for Grist was correct. Uh, you mean like boarding in EE over Grist? If that's the case, then I would like, I'd keep the Grist in. Like, Grist is absolutely nuts against me. I have just like no good ways of dealing with that. All right, here's the shadow. Carry on. Game one, where I turn to evolution for Grist sacking a bird. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, they, the Gris was the right call. Like, I was talking about it uh, to chat, how it's kind of funny that, like, the Yawgmoth players, as soon as you see, like, Thought Seize or something on turn one, you can uh, either Eldritch Evolution or tutor up a Gris and just, like, know it's going to be good because it is just all the time. It's phenomenal. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Probably not K commanding, so I think I'm just going to hit for three. This is going to have to be like at least a three turn clock regardless. So. I don't think I really get much out of like main phasing a K command. Card made Yogg a tier death. Oh, absolutely. Like, I think a lot of people underestimate how good Grist is in that deck. Okay, so we've got two options here. Option number one is untap, take our hit for six, pass the turn, hope we don't die. And it would have to be Boros Charm plus Burn Spell. Option number two is we fetch, get a basic swamp, go down to six, K Command down to five, make them discard, deal two, put them to 15. And then they just have to have double Burn Spell of any kind. And I think think I'm going to go for that line. Because we're not presenting lethal the turn after with the uh, untap line. With this line, we're at least presenting lethal. Best card outside of Yogg. Moth himself for sure. I would agree. <laughs> I would absolutely agree. All right, so let's sack you, see if we find like an Inquisition. Uh, another shadow is fine, I guess. Like we're still dead to the same things, which is just double burn spell. But we do beat like a creature. Okay. Last card in hand had to have been dead if they're scooping there. So we've got brutality. Everything else is pretty bad. EE's okay. Endurance could be okay against uh, Sanctifier on Vex. We'll see what we want to board out. Ren's pretty meh. Trim on some thought seizes. Maybe just like bring in a couple endurances over those. Mainly just for the clock. Anger of the gods, I don't think is worth it. Yeah, like every time I lose to Yogmoth, it's generally because of grist like occasionally i'll lose to to yogmoth itself uh just like oh they top decked a cord for a yogmoth cool but most of the time it's because of situations like that game where it's just oh turn two i played a yogmoth yep that's good <laughs> Goblin Guide. Goblin Guide reveals wooded foothills. All right, so I'm going to fetch and shock on my main phase here uh, to play around skewer the critics. Discard's fine. We'll just ditch stomping ground. But I want to be able to cast double shadow next turn, which is why I'm fetching out uh, Blood Crypt here. Lightning Bolt. So let's 
kill swift spear take two And it has shown their intention to suspend a Rift Bolt. So we'll play Shock, Shadow, say Go. They know we've got this Lightning Bolt, but what are you going to do? They point the Bolt at the Shadow. I'll just let it go. If they point the Bolt at me... And I'll probably end up, like, bolting the Goblin Guide into turn. Planning on getting my first copy of the Ragavan, while I still have to keep in the back of my mind that it can get banned. I would absolutely keep it in the back of your mind. Uh, I would not buy, like, I wouldn't buy Ren, Ragavan, uh, Pitch Elementals, Omnath, Urza Saga... Unless you are okay if they get banned. Like, I would not pick them up as an investment or like, I'm going to make a bunch of money off this because they're going to go up, whatever. Um, but if you're okay with saying, if these cards get banned, I'm okay taking that L. Then you can pick up Ragavan or whatever. When can be the next band? Who knows? Could be next week. Could be next year. But I think Ragavan... I don't think it's possible that Ragavan is not at least mentioned on the watch list for potential bannings. Like, do I think it's the most egregious thing on the list? Probably not. But it's got to be on the list. Ragavan seems fine to me in modern. Coming from the Young Wolf Strangle Root guys, uh, Grist player, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that Ragavan does seem fine, but I don't think the card overall is uh, extraordinarily healthy for the format. <laughs> Fury, on the other hand. So we do have a, a list. I don't have it typed up, but it's essentially the cards that I think deserve to be banned to make the card or to make the, uh, the format kind of fair again. And like the pitch elementals are on the list, obviously. All right, you have the way to kill me. Yep. All right. Had to make sure they had the, uh, the burn spell. Modern with no horizons is what we need. Agreed. No argument there. Do not think I can take that L, but I've been waiting months and nothing changed so I can get them. Um, so I have to get them to not lose out at this point. So that's a good point. Like I'm my concern as an outside party is always that Wizards hasn't taken this action in so long that people are going to hit like that comfort level. And say, oh yeah, well they haven't banned it yet, so it's fine. Like, they're not going to ban it if they haven't banned it yet. And I hate that that happens, because I feel like a lot of the times it leads to that argument of, oh yeah, this is safe. Because they haven't, they haven't made an adjustment yet. And I don't want people to take that impression because just because something hasn't been banned yet 
certainly doesn't mean that it shouldn't be banned or it shouldn't be on the watch list or something similar to that. Pretty sure we don't have, or we do have a basic mountain. Nice. But I just don't want people making like a bad financial decision thinking that there's no way this is going to get banned because it hasn't been banned yet. Honestly, I think the card is safe until at least the next set release. It's possible, but you always get in those situations where like, oh, card X is safe and maybe the next set release, they'll relook at it. And then they come out with like Modern Horizons 2 and say, or not Modern Horizons 2, Double Masters 2 and say, hey, look, we're reprinting Ren and Six. Well, Red and Six is kind of on the list of cards that should probably be looked at. All right, what is my plan here? I think I'm just going K Command shoot the swift spear, make them discard. But maybe like Lily Edict is better because maybe they'll point at uh, a burn spell or an attack at Lily. Yorion needs a ban. Yorion is... Yorion itself is not on my list, but companions in general, I think, need to go. Uh, like, I don't think you should be cherry picking what companions are or are not allowed in the format. As soon as you say, like, some number of them are problematic, they just need to get rid of the whole mechanic. Um, because I don't think it's appropriate to say... Well, this deck is allowed this extra card for this no condition. Um, but this other deck is too good to have that. It needs to go in this other deck. I think you need to say, like, either all companions are allowed or no companions are allowed. Uh, but out of, like, the Yorion decks, the Pitch Elementals, Omnath, Renin Six... Mishra's Bobble. Uh, I think all of those can reasonably be put on like the this card is problematic for modern list. Or you could always look at Abundant Growth if you're looking at a card or looking for a card to ban out of specifically the Omnath decks that would have an impact but wouldn't affect other aspects of modern but I do not believe that you can only ban one card out of those decks and be okay. I think you have to ban multiple things. And I think that's where we're going to see like some problems. Uh, the next time bans come around is they're going to ban like only one thing and it's not going to fix the problem at all. I'll just be like, oh, well, we thought banning X would be enough. No, not really. Get rid of you. Play out you. Loris didn't need to be banned, confirmed. I didn't say that. Didn't say that at all. Not my bobbles. I mean, bobble is one of the cards that just like creates uh, bad play patterns. 
or repetitive play patterns, whatever you want to consider it, with other cards like Ledger Shredder and um, Dragon's Rage Channeler and that kind of stuff. I don't think I have another... Oh, I do have another basic. Heck yeah. Problem solved. Now, do I want to fatal push and draw a card? Or do I want to terminate and be mana efficient? Probably fatal push and draw a card. Let them just print a three cost creature that's affected, no companion. Really bugs me that combo decks can go off in your turn with force backup. Yeah, that's why uh, Violent Outburst is on my list of cards too that shouldn't be in the format. Like between uh, now Shardless Agents and it's MH2, Demonic Dread, Ardent Plea, like, and the fact that you just have perfect mana with these decks. There's not really a reason to need um, Violent Outburst. Like, you can play Ardent Plea in your deck just fine. All right, so we're going to draw step K command. Get back, Ragavan. Oh, that is upkeep. Draw step. Turn Ragavan, you discard. Hopefully we can snag like a sorcery speed spell. Like that. Cascade isn't too big of a problem. It's the instant speed. Right. Like, it's just you shouldn't be able to back up your combo, like you said, with force negation on, or like Mallow said, with force negation on my turn. That's where it gets egregious. Like, do I'm, I'm all in favor of being able to protect your combo. Sure. Just not on my turn with a free pitch counter spell. All right. Can take up Lily, ditch, terminate. Now that I've got this Riveteer's charm, uh, dash Ragavan. And if opponent hits something live like a creature, uh, then I might Riveteer's Charm to get it. If they don't, then I'm probably just uh, charming myself to, to exile the top three. I've had Pact Negation in the format forever. Yeah, but that actually has like a cost, right? Because you can... Uh, Pact, and then if you don't win, you have to untap and pay for your pact. But force negation allows you to go for it. And if you force negation, you just untap and go for it again and not really like lose any momentum or anything. So black, red, green. Looking for shadows, Tarmogoyfs, Tarmogoyf. All right, so dash you. What do we got? Another Aaron Mesa. So play Goy. 
lightning bolt you to the do I want a lightning bolt yeah I'll keep taking up Lily I'm probably okay with ulting Lily separating white source from the other land so I can take out like Boros charm and lightning helix's potential outs Gen Charm is basically bad expressive iteration. It's it's very bad expressive iteration. <laughs> no argument there. All right. So now we get to Edict U. This grows Tarmogoyf. So we add enchantment to the yard. Dash Ragavan. Aya. Maybe hit a lightning bolt effect. It's almost like your deck plays a million of them, and we've hit three straight lands. And I'm just gonna cast this other Ragavan and keep it around. Just blocker. Like, I'm not dead to a creature. I shouldn't be dead to one spell. How on earth we managed to win this one? I have no idea. <laughs> we'll take it, but... <laughs> I think we had to dodge, like, six draws there. But Jun Charm, or Riveteer's Charm, sorry, has been one of the cards that I have not been very impressed with. Like, I think it's pretty good in, like, the Jun mid-range shells, but if your build is, like, more focused on Shadow, I think the card's kind of underwhelming. More for the fact that you just have to, like, slap on a three-cost uh, three tag to it, and that's a big, uh, big ask. Oh, man. Hold up. <laughs> Steven, are you in the chat? You're not. I gotta... Come on. No. No, Moto, stop closing my window. I don't want that window. What are you doing? Why on earth do you keep changing my window? Oh. <laughs> I love my opponent's uh, name here. We have a, uh, a growing joke. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, just like saying anything and then I hardly know her like lightning bolt. I hardly know her. And I'm glad that my opponent has the same sense of humor. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna ship find lands better. Am I throwing back a land or am I throwing back a three drop? Probably a three drop. There's the charm. See, I've only liked it in that Wilderness Wreck deck, the Splash for it. Even in that, I didn't really like it. I feel like Wilderness Wreck has, like, so many good options already that you don't really need it. Like, if you're talking about just a payoff once you get a Wreck online, then you've got, um... Oh, uh, what's it called? Memory Deluge and... Cryptic Command, the big um, expansion explosion, like all of those cards. All right, so this is blue red underworld breach. We 
You don't have a particularly great hand against them here. But on the bright side, I'm pretty confident they do not have any sort of counter spell here. So I should be able to get this Lily down. Yeah, we're going to get the Lily down. I was thinking for a second if maybe I wanted to evoke fury and just like do something else. But I think this is going to be reasonable. See. Besides Archmage's Charm, I think most cards in Modern are better at a pure power level than option cards. Yes. So that's a big part of it. And I've tried having this discussion on chat a couple times. Um, modal spells are good when the flexibility makes them better than the sum of their parts. Uh Jun Charm is not one of those options. Or Riveteer's Charm, whatever. Because you've got an Edict in a format where, like, Terminate exists, but more importantly, like, Fatal Push and Holy Heat Bolt are doing, like, the same job most of the time. Not every time, but most of the time for one mana. Uh, you've got a Exile of Yard effect where, in, in your format, Endurance does it for free with an additional card. And then you've got, like, Nihil Spellbomb, Soul Guide Lantern, stuff like that. And then your last mode is the look at the top three or exile the top three. Um, but if you wanted that effect, you could, especially in like a shadow deck, you could play painful truths and get the same effect. Uh, but you actually get the cards instead of exiling them and then hope you are able to find them later. Um, so opponent didn't do anything relevant. I'm wondering if I'm going to need to hard cast this fury later. Because I can fetch and shock, play Spyro, ditch fury land, play shadow. So I guess if that's the case, let's go. Speaking of modal cards, I just missed the day's cryptic command was good. And I'm right there with you there. Like I, I played the absolute hell out of fairies for so many years. And having fairies bad because cryptic command is bad and like bitter blossoms bad, but that's beside the point. Uh, but having fairies bad because like cryptic command for the most part is bad is a really, really rough feeling that I do not care for. All right, so. Again, I'm like not too afraid of counter spells. Uh, they might run some metallic rebukes in the board, but for the most part, they're not running any sort of uh, counter spell in the main. So yeah, unless they were able to find like an Emery or a Ragavan really quickly to start ramping up their mana, they were going to have some trouble there. Gonna get hated on here. I think Bitter Blossom has always been bad in modern. Uh, first off, you shut your whore mouth. Just <laughs> kidding, but for real, shut your whore mouth. Um, now, nah, Bitter Blossom has had moments that it's been fairly solid, but it was mostly back in like 2017 
when like Grix's shadow is popular, blue white control is popular. Or Grix's shadow is like first really taking off. Blue white control was really popular. Jund was really popular. Uh, stuff like that. But since then, it has absolutely gotten worse and worse and worse. So you always have to take these arguments with a, uh, a grain of salt. All right, I got a ton of stuff I want to consider bringing in. Void mirror is probably too narrow. So I want both Ancient Grudge and Force of Vigor. Maybe this is just like too many Artifact Hate spells. Like I know I want Force because it also hits the um, Urza's Sagas, which maybe I want the extra Beseju in for that. Board out the forest if I'm boarding in the Beseju. Board out charms because I'm boarding in endurance. Actually, keep a charm to keep the green count up. I think we're gonna go like that or something. You can never have too many artifact slash graveyard hate cards when up against these type of decks. I mean, you can to an extent. Uh, for the most part, I think just like a reasonable hand like this has a good chance. You're not overboard on like grave hate. You don't even have any artifact hate, but you just have pressure and they don't have that much interaction. So as long as we play around like Metallic Rebuke, uh, keep try to keep Endurance for a spot where we don't get blown out by like a uh, un Unholy Heat, then we might be okay. So go. Best case scenario would be opponent does something like... Uh, Untap, land, Mishra's Bobble, Emery. Not that land, different land. I mean, take this. It's not like we're going to turn down the kill. And we'll just get Armagoyf down. Get pressure going. I think like the worst thing you can do in these kind of matchups is not get some sort of a clock going and just give your opponent a lot of chances to draw out because they've essentially got a, a one card combo in Underworld Breach. If they're able to get like a grinding station to the yard or to hand uh, a Mishra's Bobble, which they can get off Urza's Saga. So you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're just like dead to them top decking and underworld breach. And the best way to do that is just like get pressure early on. This Teferi. Just glad Goyf is seemingly doing work in this list. Goyf's like always good, I think, in shadow decks. Um, and obviously I know this isn't like a dedicated shadow deck, but it's just a card that's like always going to perform very well when your game plan is getting your opponent dead. So next turn, we can Season Pyromancer, ditch the two lands, pick one back up with Ren. See what our opponent gets. 
Springleaf drums reasonable. Shadow Spear. Oh, if that's just Shadow Spear pass, this is pretty good for us. Especially if we can find like a removal spell or uh, a force of vigor. Well, if they strap up the construct and swing it Ren, we're just going to have to let that go. Emery whiffs. So, if they go... Strap up construct. Maybe actually... No, I think I want to lock and save the Ren. You're attacking at me. Sure. We take that. Okay, so let's take up on whatever. Tack in for two. Play. Play Goyf. Ancient Grudge. Now I took out the Forest for Beseju. So I've got the mountain. Ancient Grudge here. Flashback Grudge on the Construct. Say go. And if they want to spend their turn just like emerying back the springleaf drum, I think I'm just going to let that go. Maybe they're thinking about playing another Emery. Just an unholy heat. Okay, we'll endurance and save our goif. Oh, baby. I'm thinking about how easy or difficult it would be to, like, besage you them out. It's probably not worth it, but... At least a thought. Really just trying to, like, catch a uh, Urza Saga.
Urza Saga would be great. Answer to Emery would be great. Opponent going to their main phase would be great. Not sure why we are paused here. We're deep in thought. Or maybe opponent disconnected, did they? No, they actually had disconnected momentarily. So eventually we will uh, we'll move on. Possibly. There we go. Suppressive iteration. You got it. Puts a sorcery in the card for Goyf. Another copy of Emery, All right? Oh. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I want to see my next card. Need this game to conclude so I can sleep without forever wondering what happened. Well, what happened was we put a force of negation or force of vigor on the stack and her opponent decided they'd had enough. Very anticlimactic, but what are you going to do? Away Discord. Where did you go to? Oh, another one lander. Good night to you as well, Ferret. Appreciate you coming around and hanging out. I think we got a mulligan this. I oh, know, worse. Back push, second land or third land, hope. Let's see, Twistings, thank you so much for the follow. Hope you're having an awesome, awesome Tuesday wherever you're at in the world. Appreciate you coming around and hanging out.
Oh, we are maybe able to sneak away with a 4 1 here. Fire Bluff Canal. Fire Bluff Canal. Ah. The echo. <laughs> the echo, it scares me. All right. Um. Do I think my opponent is on a spell pierce here? think we are going to risk it because the upside of landing Ren is pretty huge. Like if we were really concerned about spell pierce and decided like if they've got a spell pierce, we lose the game on the spot. We could have cast Tarmogoyf there. But it looks like they're going to be on a counter spell here. Let's cast a Tarmogoyf. No counter spell. So play you. Get another Blood Crypt. Pick up. Sego. What on earth do they have? Start by attacking with the Tarmogoy. Fetch up a swamp. Sure. Pick up on our catacombs. Play Goyf number two. They might, they're not countering Goyf, so they're not casting spells. Archimedes Charm, draw two, sure. We've got 75,000 cards in hand, approximately. Express Federation is fine. But you probably want to start putting something on the stack that is a uh, creature related. But these goits are going to grow to four fives. If they find a fetch land, they can arc mate or not arc mate charm, uh, unholy heat to kill off a goif. I'm going to look at my top card. Ledger Shredder is okay. So I'm going to fatal push the Shredder.
That way we can play our Liliana they conveniently know about. Ditch the land that they also know about. Get back the land that they know about. Hi, uh. And now you've got to do something about a Ren ultimate, uh, Liliana, Edict, two Tarmogoyfs, this other convenient Liliana that they don't know about. All right, so is this going to be like Chandler plus Merc Tide? Um, is there any way to play around spell pierce here? Yes, untap and ren down ping on the channeler. So in the turn, Bolt doesn't play around the spell pierce. Because if they pierce this, I untap. They get delirium for Chandler, so Ren can't ping it. And then they've got um, uh, the Chandler to sack for Liliana. But if I go to my turn, Ren ping the Chandler... Liliana on the stack then they have to respond to the Ren ping with casting something which lets me then bolt the channeler and still have Lily Edict for the Merc Tide and Lethal so let's go to ping you Now, I don't think there's anything they can have. So we'll just go to combat, swing with both of our guys. They're both bigger than Merc Tide. This is more or less so we can just like thought seize for information. But like any time we can put ourselves in a position to tick up our planeswalkers instead of tick down, that's a, uh, a pretty substantial difference. So like playing out uh, that way, I know we have to tick down the Ren, but we would be able to kill off the Merc Tide, still have Lightning Bolt for lethal, but we could play the Lily and tick up in case something didn't go according to plan. Like, if we went for Lightning Bolt there and they had Force Negation, well, now we've got a clear board, two Tarmogoyfs, and a Liliana ticking up instead of, like, a Liliana at one loyalty, two Tarmogoyfs. Like, it's just, like, tiny little adjustments there. All right, what do I want 
what do I not want? Just trim a bunch of hand disruption, some ragavans on the draw. Do I want to consider the extra Beseju? So I want to consider it for Blood Moon. But I've got both a basic forest and a basic swamp, so we can probably play around it a little bit. He says optimistically. Sure. That was nice. That was a, uh, a pretty good game. Felt like we had a lot of good plays to make there. All right. I can go for the Ren Ping. If they have any instant here, then the channeler survives. So maybe I just go for the Ren Tick up. Yeah, I'll go for it. I'm assuming they have an instant, but... Like, there's no way you play out a channeler here into what is likely a Ren without some sort of an answer. If I have, like, one more land in hand, I'd probably just tick up. Blood Moon? <laughs> Got it, Chief. The bait, she is complete. Now I just need to draw a few less lands. A few less lands, a few more Tarmogoyfs. Less lands. Less. Not as many. A smaller amount. How many lands is that off the top? Oh, 
We've got a couple multicolored cards in the deck, and unfortunately, that's one of them. Or not multi pip cards in the deck. For sure. And a Merc God. Pretty good. That's pretty not. Alright, scoop it up. Hearse plus Merc Tide there. So, do we want to reconsider this Force of Vigor situation? Maybe like Besaju is enough. Besaju is probably enough. Is Besaju enough? Boarded in the Besaju, so we probably want to board out something. All right, we'll see what happens. Ragavan, Endurance, Fury. This hand doesn't scream. I hope this Ragavan lives. I don't know what does. Okay. All right, opponent. Asking the big questions. Block resolves. Go ahead and get our basic swamp. All right, go on. Bolt the Tarmogoy. It's only got three toughness. You don't want to miss such a golden opportunity. Oh, man. That fun situation of, like, a little bit less lands, a little bit more action. Hardcast Fury Mana against the, the Counterspell Archmage's Charm deck. Doesn't really feel like where I want to be. It feels like trading down pretty badly. Just believe. All it takes, just... Opponent can't have any sort of interaction in their deck. It's like nothing but interaction.
Dress down. It's, uh, unfortunate. Dress down into no block. So I'm going to let the dress down sacrifice into turn. And then endurance is going to shuffle all that stuff back. I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't just block with the ledger shredder there. Like, even if I throw something in the yard, it doesn't grow the Tarmogoyf since it has no abilities. Yeah, it's really weird that it doesn't, uh, that they didn't block there. I do not understand that decision. You see, I figured you'd get a kick out of that. All right, so we've got options. Part of me thinks I need to just EE -E on two and clear the board. Part of me wants to hard cast Fury, but this isn't like the most telegraphed counter spell ever. I could EE -E on one. That seems meh. Put an EE on two. See what they do. Let that resolve. If that's the case. Let's uh, take out the twos. Carry on. Their second main phase dress down. Is there any argument for just like putting a fury into play here? Probably not, right? Because I can hold up this uh, charm for a Merc Tide.
I would love to see Land Merc died here. So I guess we'll probably like take three, try to Riveteer's Charm, see three new cards. Like I want to resolve this Fury and I feel like the best way to make that happen is for them to tap off of Merc Tide or tap off of Counterspell for Merc Tide or like force them into a situation where they need to counter this Riveteer's Charm. Best case scenario would be Riveteer's Charm reveals. Removal spell. Or if they just go for a Merc Tide here, that's great. Making that Merc Tide bigger. Like it. So you sack a big dude. Untap. Shadow. So we'll just cast this here, Fury. Hope your hand is just like triple counter spell. Nope. Dang. You got it. The immediate, immediate double black spell. Just like not even considering a break, just right here. Ooh. Oh man, I didn't think we were gonna get this far. All right. Let's see, J Halbs 21, thank you so much for the follow. I hope you're having an awesome Tuesday wherever you're at in the world. Appreciate you coming around and hanging out, watching us maybe get away from this. Oh, uh, yes, Blood Moon, my beloved. I feel like you got some pretty sweet signed Blood Moon somewhere. I'm well, uh, well, Birdie told me. <laughs> Keep the token smart. Signed by some dopey streamer, can't remember his name. Well, that could be anybody. Ragioli. Do they bobble themselves or me? Me. Oh, 
Can't really cast that. Canada, thanks, man. Hope you're well. I appreciate it. I hope the same your direction. Ragavan is attacking. So I think we're going to let this through. And they cannot thought seize us. Nice. <laughs> this would appear to be another copy of Murktide Regent. Uh, they can have a counter spell. But I don't think I can play around that. Nice. Yeah, 4-1. Four 4-1 one. Four one with the mean green Jun Shadow Machine. Just how we drew it up. So our one loss was to Merc Tide. Kind of to be expected. Or not Merc Tide, uh, four color. Four color pal. So kind of to be expected there. Uh, otherwise, like Ren and Liliana, or <laughs> Liliana. Sorry, my my central Mississippi is showing. Uh, Ren and Liliana both looked pretty solid. Uh, like the lightning bolts, terminate Riveter's charm was still pretty. Eh. Fury was kind of cool. Spyro was great. Spyro is always great. I think if you're looking for a three mana effect, uh, that like just play Spyro. If you're playing Fable of the Mirror Breaker, it's not the same. It's not like you're playing Fable because you want to pretend it's as good as Spyro, but it's not. So just remember that Spyro is absolutely always overperforming. Like I think this card is one we need to be looking way more often at in shadow lists like spyro just does everything you want you gives you that squee effect of dodging uh, opponents wraths and spot removal it's uh when you're really low on hand size it's card advantage otherwise it's card selection plus you get bodies on board it's great with ren great with liliana like it's just solid pick up your copies play them as far as changes go, we are like really, really geared towards artifacts in the board with this list. So Ancient Grudges, Force of Vigors, Alpine Moon for Urza Saga, uh, EEs, Besages. Like, I think we can kind of cut a little bit of that hate and try to bring in some more options for uh, for like four color, Murktai, whatever. But I don't think it's like a huge deal one way or the other.